In this video, I'm gonna be replacing this exterior door with the sliding patio door. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So without further ado, let's get started. I ran into a subscriber and he asked me to come out and replace his door. So I said, okay, let's do this as long as I make this video. But there's something really important you gotta check before you replace the door. So we gotta go inside to do that. Before you rip out your door, you need to make sure that you got the door that's the right size to go in place of that door. So in order to measure your door, you got a couple of, op a couple of options. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is if you have the trim off on the inside, just hook onto the door on one side and measure over. And this door is 71 inches. So the rough opening more than likely is 72 inches. But something else you can do is measure from the inside of the jam to the other inside of the jam. To show you firsthand on how to do this, first butt up to the inside of the jam on one side, measure over to the inside of the jam on the other, then simply add an inch and a half because the jam thickness is three quarters inch, and then that's going to be the width of the door that's in the opening now. Also, it's important to check the height of the door as well. So to do that, you simply go ahead and put your tape measure on the floor, and then measure up to the top of the door. And this is an 80 inch door, and that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's rip out this old door. The door we'll be placing back into that opening is a Reliabilt door, and this came from Lowe's. It's about $360. And if you hook onto the one side and pull over to the other, we got 70 inches, about 70 and an eighth to be exact. So that's gonna go right in that opening with no problem. So if we measure the height of the door, we got, 79 and a half and again that's going to fit right in that opening with no problem when it comes to removing the door a lot of times you're going to have brick mold on your door and you got to check to see if it's nailed into the side of the house and if it is you're going to have to take that brick mold off first because that's going to hold the door into place so even though you run a saws all around the side of the door to cut all the nails you're still going to be held in place by the brick mold so to remove that i recommend taking a wonder bar and a hammer and just hitting the wonder bar into the trim. What you wanna do is go ahead and start at the bottom, wedge the bar into place, and just pry it away from the door. Sometimes this stuff pops off real easy, sometimes it doesn't. If you're interested in any of the products used in this video, you can check out my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. And also, I should have been wearing safety glasses because when you're pulling this brick mold off, some debris will fly off. So be sure to protect your eyes. Now what you gotta do is make sure you pull all the nails out if there's any left into the side of the house. Take a look right here. See nails like this? Sometimes they'll pull right through that brick mold. You gotta remove them clearly before you put any trim around the outside. Take a look at this. As you can see, the jam of the door is just kind of sitting there, so we know there's not any nails or screws holding the door on this side. Now, if we go around here to this side, if you shake the jam, as you can tell, there's something holding it. And to go ahead and cut those nails is probably the easiest way to do it. And I got a saws off the metal blade on, and it could be nails or screws down here where the latch was for the door. Either way, the Sawzall will cut right through it with a metal blade. So all we gotta do, put the Sawzall back in between the house and the jam and run it down the side. This is a four inch Sawzall blade and as you can see, I have to go down both sides of the door. Now a six inch blade, I would not have to do that. I got the homeowner on the inside and he's gonna push it out towards me and hopefully it falls right out of this opening, right like so. And since we're coming down this way, the door's gonna stay shut, so it's easier to carry that way instead of worrying about the door opening. It's really important to lift with your legs so that way you don't hurt your back. And as you can see here, we got old caulk where the old door was, so we need to make sure we get that off there. First, I like to sweep it clean, then go through with a pry bar and just scrape it off the floor. Next thing you wanna do is clean up this opening where you cut those nails. So let's go ahead and tack them down back into the wood framing that looks pretty good and what we need to do now before we set the door into place is see how level the opening really is so we're going to put a level here and as you can see it's looking pretty good and this is a two foot level i didn't have my four foot level with me so i'd recommend using a four foot level but two foot level is fine all right so the opening is level and then let's check the size for plumbness just out of curiosity more than anything and that looks pretty good all right 
So what we're gonna do is dry fit the door into place first before we put the liquid nails in to make sure it all works out really well. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I do a lot of work by myself, but when it comes to setting patio doors, you definitely need a second set of hands. So that's exactly why you dry fit it. After we set the door into place, we realized that we need to build this opening down a little bit. I could have caught that with the tape measure, but I didn't think about that. So another thing I wanted to mention, take a look here. This is a nailing flange, and this is for a new construction house. So typically you would want to get a door for an old construction house that wouldn't have this. So in this case, we got to make sure also that the nailing flange hits the side of the house so we can anchor the door. But also the door latch that's sitting down here is going to have screws through it that's going to hold the side of the door into place as well, just similar to the door that was in there. So I just wanted to let you know that. And now what we're going to have to do is cut a piece of three quarter board down. So in order to do so, all we got to do is get a measurement and we need a piece that is 71 and about a half. So we're going to come over here. We're going to measure this piece of wood, 71 and a half that's going to fit into that opening. So we're just going to mark it and then take our speed square make a straight line like so and then we're going to cut it right there with our circular saw so all we got to do lean it off of an edge just cut it right down i'm just going to take this piece of board stick it right up in there tight and then i pre-started some framing nails so all we got to do is drive those into place Get a tube of liquid nails and go on the bottom here where the door's going to set. And we want to make sure we get good coverage here because this is what's going to hold the door down to the concrete bottom. And you may have a wood bottom here instead of concrete. And if you do, double check for rot. And if there's rot, replace the piece of subfloor. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to exhaust this whole tube across here. The two favorite types of liquid nails I like to use is projects and heavy duty. Now what we need to do now that the door setting in place is make sure the bottom is centered. And we already know the threshold is level because we checked that before we set the door. So on this side, I got about an inch and a quarter heavy. Then over here, I got inch and a quarter heavy. Yeah, so the bottom's centered. So what I'm going to do is go on the inside and make sure we're all the way in. So it's center, so what we're going to have to do, go ahead and anchor the bottom corner here. And all we got to do is use aluminum roofing nails. Check to make sure we're plumb. And it looks really good, nice and plumb there. So we'll go ahead and anchor up here in this corner next. So we'll go ahead and pop one right into that piece of wood we added. Now that we got the door setting where we need it, I'm just going to go through and nail off this nailing flange. I usually try to nail every hole or every other hole, either way is fine, and I do not nail the latch side yet because I need to set the latch first. First thing you're going to want to do, because this door doesn't come with the wheels adjusted, go ahead and adjust these screws down here. Put a little tension on them. There's one here to raise the side of the door when you tighten it on this side. Then on this side, we got the same thing. So we we'll want to tighten this one up too. And then we want to check with our level, make sure we're nice and plumb and that looks good. The key to leveling up this door is you don't have to get this perfectly plumb. The best thing to do is try to get the same gap up at the very top and then the same gap down here at the bottom. And in order to adjust it, again, if you tighten this up, it lifts this side of the door up. And if you tighten this up, it lifts this side of the door up, then it cocks the top corner over tighter. Now it's time to install the handle set. In this particular model, it comes with the lock set. So clearly you want your lock on the outside of the house and you gotta line it up with, there's a slot that matches this shape right inside there. So you gotta get it lined up. And now that that's lined up and sitting where it needs to go, you take the piece that goes on the inside and place it in with the same fashion. The shape matches the same size hole on the inside. Now you got to place this part into this hole like so. It's just a little button. And then the opposing side gets this screw. 
Some patio doors will not come with a lock and key. It will just have a lock that you lock from the inside, but you cannot enter from the outside. So be sure you get what you need. All right, now that the handle sets together, always double check, make sure everything works. That looks like it locks and then down where you can use the key. Very nice. All right, so now that all that works, what we're gonna do, we're going to set this latch side where we need it. Then we're gonna push this frame in to get it plumb and then we're gonna anchor it. Shut the door and see the latch if it hooks into this part of the door and if you shut it it's not catching so clearly this needs to drop to lower so we'll try it right there and we're going to test it there all right yeah looks like it's catching there really good so now we're going to take the two screws that came with it and go in each side of this latch right, so what i'll do is i'll check this reveal while I'm tightening that up to get it straight from this point to that point. So it looks like we need to tighten it up a little more. So now, as you can see, we got a nice straight line from here to here and the reveal from the door to the jam looks nice and straight. So now that we got it where we want it, we just put this second screw into the latch. This is arguably the most important part of this door insulation is the insulation around the door. So all we gotta do is take this can of great stuff for windows and doors. You don't wanna get the large cracks and gaps cause that's definitely too much and it might push the side of this jam out. So you just wanna get the one that's meant for windows and doors cause it doesn't expand as much supposedly. And now we're gonna just start at the bottom and fill in that gap right around the door. And this stuff expands as it sets up. If you're not going to be trimming the door out right away, be sure to take a razor knife and cut the dried spray foam because it'll interfere with your trim job if you don't. Because this is a patio door, a lot of times what you gotta do to finish these up is rip down a piece of wood to come out flush with the drywall. So in this case, I'd have to rip down a piece that's an inch and a quarter wide and using three quarter board. And your trim is just going to go from that board over the drywall. And that's how you're going to finish up the inside of this. And I'd show you how to do it, but I don't have the material here for it. I'm going to show you how to do the outside. So if we come out here, if we take a look at the exterior, we have kind of the same idea other than what we're going to get is five quarter board, which is an inch and quarter as well. It's inch and quarter thick. And we're just going to fill in this crack between the J channel and the door and then caulk around it. And then that's how we're going to finish up the outside. Again, I don't have the material here I'd show you. So if you need to know how to install an entry door, check out this video. It'll help you out.